Yo, what's up guys? We got another video here analyzing my own gameplay this time. So I did one of these and it was for Fiji's gameplay. Someone recommended I do my own. So now that is, it is actually the 3rd of the 11th. Tomorrow is going to be the anniversary of the time I got this game. I'm going to be analyzing XLVI, which is the first solo squad world record I ever got. This was beaten now by the 47, which was beaten a month later on the 21st of December. And lately I got the 48. But out of all those gameplays, this is my favorite out of all of them. Because this gameplay, I can actually perfectly visualize... Uh, what I did in that day, and basically what happened after, with the 47 and 48 and most of my 30s, I don't remember shit from them, but this gameplay is one of the gameplays I remember specifically very well. The gameplay itself is a gameplay that was a very weird and interesting one, because overall, a lot of my playstyle here was decided by my mood of the time, and I think that's going to be one of the nice focuses of today's video. And I'm going to talk about how the mood can impact your gameplay, how overall your personal feeling towards the game is uh, going to affect it. So yeah, let's watch it. I'm going to go over the whole gameplay, talk about uh, what I did, some of the mistakes I did, and also in depth what I was thinking at the time. Again, this is one of the gameplays I remember very well, so I'll be able to analyze it beautifully. Here, this is something I actually used to do in my old gameplays when I got a record, which is play the uh, start of the game. This is because I wanted people to know I'm not boosting and like trying to load with someone. And I don't do that because it's kind of useless anyway. This actual background uh, was me playing a piano there. Uh, for the way I spawned, I spawned here, which usually now if I get to spawn, I will actually go straight to reception here. Uh, instead, I go to this corner. Now, both of these are pretty good. Back then, I, I went corner because that was just what I liked. I actually got this corner idea from Barks. Uh, but usually sometimes nowadays I will change this up just because you have a very weird angle when you're redeploying on here So if someone deploys with you, it's kind of garbage Now talking about how I played this gameplay within this whole day I was actually in a, in a completely peaceful mood. I died didn't care. I got garbage loot didn't care uh, it was uh, Actually one of the only days where I did something other than play this game so I was in a very different mindset than usual. And in my opinion, that helped out because when you have your mind cleared, you get to analyze every single situation and you don't uh, let your emotions drive your destiny. Over here, we have no loot. The route I take is um, a cafeteria route. You can actually go up and over into infirmary down here if you don't drop down. I usually drop down because I like guns. It makes it faster just in case people actually redeploy bottom. The reason I do this is because I heard this guy pick up an item. Now here, I didn't realize there's another guy here. This is really garbage. And then also a guy came here with bad timing. Usually I should have been dead. I didn't realize, but I thought these guys were same team. This one here and this one here. That's not the case. They were actually different teams, uh, which was very interesting. So overall, this gameplay should have ended right here. I got lucky with the loot here because I can get up trauma. Be perfectly teams, fine. And as you can see, I am actually have a commentary in this game, unlike my 48 and 47, I think. So yeah, I was confused that these were actually different teams. The older guy and the older guy were different, completely different teams. Maybe I'll try that in a second. This idea here is a good idea. Uh, you don't want to take things too fast. Again, maybe it was my mood. I was actually making normal decisions here. I was playing just because I was playing in it. Doing smart shit. I knew the guy had no armor, so this child was fine, and he was moving towards me, so I knew that my SG-12 could take that situation. This gameplay is actually very old, so you'll notice I play <clears throat> quite differently to the way I play in my newer gameplays. I use my 14-14 sensitivity in a more <clears throat> stabbing motion, very sharp turns, whereas nowadays I do more smooth turns to try and track people better. I'm gonna be using Skulker throughout this whole time basically. So sad. Playing it safe. 
Again, I'm trying to set up a more loot. What I need in, in solo, what, what you need is you need perks, you need ruler mobility. This is what's going to be able to fulfill you with whatever you can. If you don't have loot, the game is fine, but it's just going to be way harder. This barricade is one of the more useful ones, and I do believe it actually was the deciding factor to make this gameplay what it was. My previous best game was 44, and this barricade got me two kills, pressed it up to 46. Sensors I usually put anywhere, that doesn't really matter to me. I'm actually playing very um, conservative within this game, which is something I'm myself surprised, and I think that is something to do with my mood as well at the time, where I just, um, I was sort of at peace. I didn't really care about playing all or nothing. It was fine, just playing how I wanted to. This change here was important because there's a chance this guy might have had a armor. Now I saw him on the sensor dot. Uh, he was in this corner, so I didn't know what he had. If he had an armor and I didn't change to this gun, I wouldn't have had enough ammo on my SG-12 to kill him. Or very likely wouldn't have had enough. Now what I would have done in this situation now was actually switch for a switchblade. Didn't back then. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Also, I'm missing out a reinforced. Which is an interesting idea. But I am keeping my inventory open just in case. I'm also not grabbing extra bandages, which I sometimes do. Went over those, of course. A lot of these guys I'm actually hearing. This switch was a mistake in situation, but I didn't know this guy even existed. I unshall. The problem isn't the guy in front of me. The problem is with this reach owl is if people come from this side, I am dead. The guy in front of me doesn't matter. I could identify he is garbage because by the skin and by the, the way he moves and shit. So I knew this guy was fine, but I was scared of people coming from this side. So that's why I unshall. I have consumer, so I'll be able to pop this trauma faster anyway. Reload the gun, make sure it's safe. And as you can see, I'm when I'm pushing this, I am leaving enough space for me to take a look at the front side, I can watch this and I can watch that. The back side I can't watch, but I would more likely hear it. Very weird play here. I actually didn't know this guy was arriving, but it was all good. Again, this SG-12 actually did manage to be pretty useful instead of the switchblade, so it wasn't exactly a horrible play. Managed to like two-shot these guys and shit. Mobility, which was perfect, and I got the long barrel for this, which makes this gun actually usable. Here a guy somewhere here, so I might reach out. You have to do a jump shot, which in this situation, jump shotting is slightly better off, uh, especially when they're up here, than sliding. If you're sliding, you get a really bad angle. You basically give them like a fake head glitch, because their head will now, if you jump, their head will be like here. If you slide out of this doorway here, like through here, then their head will be like there, so it's like way more difficult. You can also crouch jump, but crouch jumping make their, makes their body go down. You basically want as much upward sh stuff as you can. This position in the game is actually pretty good for timing. 7 is actually not even that good. Um, well, it's actually good enough for 40, but I would not have expected this game to go further. Loot-wise, I'm really good. Uh, these will last me till about mid-game, late mid-game. I have enough health, I have decent armor. All I really need now is just Brawler and possibly a Blackjack. I don't actually remember if I was taking Ecohawks back, back then. I used to play Peacekeeper. We'll see if I play Ecohawk in this game or not. So here I'm constantly hearing people around. This is the problem with Cell House. The audio engine in this game is so garbage you can't actually tell um, verticality. You can only tell this uh, sort of distance and direction. As you can see, this sharp motion here of my SWAT, I wouldn't have done it like this nowadays. Uh, I barely play sharp like this, like with this swipe. I don't swipe as much now. The slide here is basically the best thing you can do. I need to close the distance from here. This guy basically wouldn't have been able to beam me because I have mobility. I actually switched from Chrome. Lovely add on my own video. The Opera GX. But yeah, anyway. Uh, so you close in the distance because you have SG-12 and you can two-shot him. He doesn't have armor, so it's down. He's got the disadvantage. 
I'm actually popping trauma kits uh, earlier than I would nowadays. I would actually keep this trauma kit. Again, I was actually playing decently pretty conservative in this game. It wasn't something like mega insane when I, where I was going for like really nice speed. And this is actually what got me the 46 right here. These two kills, which was, if you remember, that barricade in infirmary. Luckily, I found some noobs. They jumped straight into it. I checked the box, if you notice. Sometimes people don't pick out everything. And this guy definitely didn't because he just opened it in front of my face. So I checked that box just in case there's another mobility. Interesting fact to point out. Uh, whenever you have 35 people left by this zone, it's going to be a pretty decent game. The way the game works is the more people you have, the faster usually the game will drop. But it will give you a nice amount of time where you do have more density. So you can always take advantage of that. Yeah, I'm coming here just to make sure they're dead. Cool fact about this birdcage. You can shoot through... Ooh. It's like doing this because it's kind of difficult to do anything you cannot shoot through this uh thing here but there is actually a spot where you can shoot through about there there's a small gap here you can shoot through so if there's a guy camping through just shoot at this wall it'll actually go through it and this side of the birdcage right here you can actually shoot through all of this and it gives you a, a better cover than they have usually you want like a automatic here but this sg12 works as well because the guy's moving towards me and not waiting for me he basically wants to revive it now I hear him, and I know he's going to push me, because that's his teammate most likely, so I'm just waiting. It actually took a bit more um, hits than I expected to kill him. I'm getting lucky with the traumas, which is very nice. I think I tried to jump over it. Yeah, but it's too far, because I, I know people want So I worked out that when I started playing this game, nobody really knew how to jump over barricades. Then I started jumping over them, and then randomly everyone started learning. So when you place the barricade in infirmary you want to place it as far back as possible even though it might not hit as far front as you want it just makes sure that people can't jump over it as easily want to jump over. because infirmary has a corner there where if you sit in that corner you can actually jump from the corner like from a corner and hit the barricade off so i put the barricade like a bit further down the perks i'm looking for is brawler but bloody tracker is one of uh, a very good perk for solo as well I basically have all good perks. The only one that's kind of garbage is um, engineer. If this was me now, I would have actually grabbed that bloody tracker. Uh, but I'm guessing I'm conserving space, which is a good idea because when you conserve space, you can grab bags a lot easier. And this is the brawler now. When I'm picking up items as well, I'm doing really sharp turns. But a bit interesting because I don't really do that shit. No, not anymore, actually. Now, from this point, if you the way you can check what sort of kills you're looking at is you look at the number here. If this is like 130 is usually when like it's just started, and you look at the amount of kills you have and the amount of people left. And that's kind of how you can work out what the game is going to go to. This is a really weird game because it actually doesn't feel... This is not a number which should go to 246, but you do have a lot of time still. And you have 35 people, which is probably what pushed us up. Good thing about Engineer, I see that barricade, so I know there's going to be someone camping there. So I'm moving towards this side. And also people on, uh, like, ruins and shit. I didn't choose to uh, go through the barricade. The reason I did this was because whenever you hear shots, you know there's going to be two teams. And whenever there's two teams, you know there's people going to die and people are going to redeploy. And what you want to do is you want to kill redeploys rather than four people. That barricade might have caused me more trouble than I would have got out of it. There could have been like three guys camping in one corner and it would have just been a waste of time. And that also is a risk of wiping people out a lot more. Uh, because if they're in a barricade and there's a quad child, then you have two options. They either kill you or you wipe them. Either way, you lose. So I'm going here to third party this stuff. Trying to beam these kids with my swap. As you can see, my aim is not quite revolutionary. I still actually have this SG-12. Um, which I don't really have any opportunities to switch this out, but nowadays I would have definitely switched it out. Luckily, 
these guys were kind of clueless. I didn't know that guy was there because of looting, so you always want to pay attention to sound. Usually the sound that you want to pay attention to isn't really footsteps, it's more just like other cues, window breaks, uh, looting bags, redeploys you can hear a lot better. Footsteps are just kind of there sometimes, especially like if you're in model or uh, cell house, but in this situation footsteps are not that easy to hear. They're possible, but not really that needed. So over here, I'm not going to push this. The reason I'm not pushing this, uh, people redeploy at 10. People can redeploy on me, then shoot me in the back. Zone will give me damage. I don't have Outlander. And mm, it's not really worth it for one kill. Exactly right. This, as I predicted, there was people redeploying. Uh, you want to check at 10 seconds to get redeploys. You can even look up into the sky and uh, shoot people out. Sometimes I do that. Back then, I didn't actually. I wasn't actually aware of this fact. Uh, I only learned this full statistic from Fiji later on, maybe six months later. Now, what I do, especially in solo, is I always try and loot bags for supply. A lot of people I see uh, when I watch gameplays, they uh, neglect their loot, their supply. And now supply and loot, the, the way I define it is loot is like what you have on you, but supply is your continuous loot. And you need supply to continuously supply yourself, and you don't want to starve out to death. Uh, so here I always try and loot some sort of bag, or at least peek into it. Now this sometimes costs me death, but it does help you out in the long term, because it, it basically provides you with what you need for nicer kills. Now, if I was reading the uh, kill feed here, which I wasn't in this game, but if I this kill feed is actually very decent to check. You can always see who's in your game. Uh, so you have a few massive prestiges. Uh, this guy here, this girl here, and I'm pretty sure one of these might be massive prestige now. And you can also check the weapon of choice. This is useful in other situations. In this game, it wasn't exactly useful, but especially in like later later on in the game when you need to have as much information as possible and there's no redeploys, so this will be very handy. Now what I could do here is actually loot uh, and heal, uh, which uh, is not really that important, but sometimes it's possible to do that if you really want. I'm actually taking this game very slowly again. I'm in a very peaceful mood. <clears throat> Don't really care. Uh, this game was actually taken at 10.30 uh, at night. That's when it finished. So whenever you're going to see this gameplay premiere, this whole analysis of this, uh, analysis of this video, then that's when this was actually happening literally a year ago, exactly to the dot. So think about that. I actually had have always had subtitles for this very reason. You can have this information here, very useful. Uh, you can also tell if supply drops are coming down. Supply drops are important for mobility, mainly. Uh, sometimes armor and War Machine Sparrow, those are kind of the only things you're looking for. You don't really need attachments, but perks, armor, and special weapons. And of course, circle collapse is also useful to know. Because, for example, the position I'm in right now, when it collapses, it's not a good idea to stay here because I'll get cut off at parade. Stimulant. Get to safety. Again, back here, I actually was kind of because of the way I was playing. I didn't go for the thirst, which was actually a really good idea. If this was me nowadays, I might have gone thirst and got shot in the back by the strife guy. But again, I'm playing sort of just chill. Uh, before this game, I actually played for about two hours. This was my last game of the day, and I never actually played Alcatraz for about a month after this game. So I had a, I had a decent warm up, but it was, uh, it was okay. I'm getting mobilities here. The amount of mobilities you want in brawlers is you want two brawlers, one mobility, most likely. That's going to probably get you from most of the game. Uh, here I got three mobilities, one brawler, which is sort of the wrong way around, but it's all good. And again, as you can see, by the second zone, you got 22 kills, which is enough for 40 bomb, and you have 33 people left in the game. When you see this sort of game, uh, you're f you might panic about this because it's a very, very nice, juicy setup for a high kill game because you have a lot of potential. I would recommend not panicking. The only way you can do that is if you just don't care to die. Um, so, and to not care to die, you need some good gameplay. So the more gameplays you get, the less stress you'll be. I also have a nice uh, sensor. The loot was very nice in this game. I'm popping the awareness here. I'm also trying to take these guys out of the zone because I hear shots back there. This was slightly a loss of time because I didn't really uh, 
didn't really have the opportunity to get anyone. And this was actually one of the most surprising parts of this game, when there was no one camping here. Now, this is sort of good and bad, uh, but in this case, I would say I was a bit surprised when I first had this. I was like, oh, wow, well, that's uh, no kills there. But now that I understand the game more, it is actually pretty good. These houses here, right there, if you have a game like this, these are the best places you can honestly farm kills in the game, in my opinion. Uh, especially because it is so easy to control the flow here and commonality of knowing where people are at all times is very easy. These houses, they are a line. So you're not going to get chowed from angles at all. And it's very easy to cut off angles. Uh, most of them are only one story as well. And roof, of course. Which makes it basically imp very much more difficult to get like chowed from every direction unlike in this house this house is quite different because you have people who could sort of land through any side so i'm pushing up here with the sensor and what i want to do at this point in the game is i want to maximize the killing potential because this game right now it's an okay game it can go to 40 yes but it can't stretch forever so i'm going to be going into these houses and try and absolutely annihilate all i can find bad news is i can't actually hear any shots so what this means is there's probably only one team here uh, and of course this also tells you there's probably only they have some sort of loot like you can see with this guy uh, at last when there's no shots and you find people uh there's most likely going to have heavy loot And as you can see, I got child in the back. And that's when I actually started hearing shots, which is good. Again, I play this very safe, which is something I wouldn't even do now. But this is a good idea. And I back off and I wait uh, for this guy to chow me. I guess the, um, the mindset which I had, I can... I don't follow in the impulses of uh, challenging people and trying to maximize the kills. Sometimes it's nice to take a breath. Again... It might feel like a bad idea, but five seconds overall in the game isn't that much. You don't have to chow this guy just to save five seconds, for example. Also, I wanted to know more information about this team. Uh, since I knew there was going to be people who are together, I wanted to know how much loot they have, what guns they have. By the by, the sound of what he shot me with, I'm pretty sure he had a cordite right now. I can't remember exactly, though. And I wanted to make sure that people aren't challing from the side. Sometimes there's people camping on the sidelines here. This is one of the only places here where you're going to get caught out because you can just get chowed from three angles. And so I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything going on wrong with that. Now, in this situation, I wouldn't make that estimation anymore. I would say I can definitely push these guys. The only thing I'm lacking is grapples. But I was, uh, I had my brain clear and I wasn't thinking like an idiot. <laughs> so I did, I did make a nice estimation. Again, this is one of the reasons it was very good to wait. Because if I didn't wait and I tried to chow him with a brawler inside there, I would have been actually more likely dead than not. And I also waited to make sure that these guys grabbed their bags and stuff. Which was good. This uh, shot here is a very interesting one. The reason I shot the window wasn't because of a mistake. I actually thought there was a guy out here. That's why I moved really quickly. Although, uh, I didn't actually kill the first guy, but well, it was fine. I'm trying to move around here as fast as possible so I don't get chowed again. This is why this is such a good place, because you can cut off so many angles in such little time. Because it's such close quarters, you can close any line of sight you want very quickly. The one sadness of this gameplay was that I ran out of brawler here. Which I knew from basically this point on that this wouldn't last enough. This was a very good idea. Again, when your mind is clear like this, you're not going to make the mistake of pushing this doorway. If you push, this is what I would do now if I was just playing normally. I would actually push this doorway to save time <laughs> because I wouldn't care about these guys. If that happens, what if these guys play correctly, they will annihilate you because they won't push straight through the doorway. They'll actually bait you and you'll be in a very, very annoying place. If you push back, they'll have to make the next move and you can react to what they do. And so these guys started pushing, I third party, he's watching someone else. Get to safety. 
And it's not always a good idea to do this. You don't want to play too safe, but you definitely want to uh, have enough sort of uh, control over your own actions to the point where you're not making really, really dumb decisions. Now, some of the decisions I could get away with, but they're kind of high risk and sort of medium reward uh, situations. So I'm, with the mindset I had in this game, when I was calm and collected, I was like, eh, who cares? High ground is very nice in this situation. High ground allows you to take redeploys, people who redeploy, and also allows you to control better, uh, basically the whole position of the area. You can move anywhere you want, and enemies can't move wherever they want. Now, this is also in preparation for my brawler to run. When you're up here, it's a bit more convenient for your brawler to run out because you can you don't have to be in the bot like in the inside where your gun will not have as much of an advantage as their stripes. That was literally one second before the brawler ran out. And as you can see, again, if I didn't have a brawler there, that would have been a much worse situation because I might have ended up either dead or one shot here because this person would have done more damage to me. Very sad that these guys actually wiped their team. In this point, it's a 32 and 27, which by the way, if you look at this in a 50 bomb standpoint, 30-30 is enough for 50 bomb. Uh, so this is a really good game. Kind of sad that these guys wiped themselves. That sort of... Yeah, actually, yeah. From this point on, this was technically enough for, for 50. 30-30 is what you're sort of looking for. Uh, by the end of this zone, if I wanted a 50, I would have had to have 40 kills. Which was definitely possible. This guy wiping his whole team was a bit sad. Not gonna lie. And luckily, that sensor which I had did eventually uh, pay off. This sensor was going to be nicer if it was here, though. On these houses. This is the end game, and in the end game, uh, this number is important, but it also is something that you shouldn't. Uh, you need to understand how this works. The more people are in end game, the quicker they all die out. And what you have to know about end game is you have to play in different zones to make sure that you're not just farming kills in one place. You're better off going to this side of the map, killing a few people, and then running away. It doesn't matter if you leave three guys here all you have to do is make sure that there isn't two teams so kill a few people and leave the rest to do whatever this is not exactly what this i did one of the best games I can uh, be with. that's something you have to understand nowadays and i did understand this point about the 26 and the 32 i knew that i was blessed with something because this game was very reliant on the end game this end game basically gave me that 46 because other than this the game is pretty standard usually this game would go to like 32 16 at this point and that has already only a max of 47. the movement which i had in this game was actually very slow and just sort of good it wasn't anything too special not anything too fancy just some normal slides cameras jump shots i wasn't overdoing it didn't mean to do that so for example that slide there uh just cameras basically cameras this guy Holy shit, I now i am looting these bags uh now i know they get it they probably don't have anything but you always have to make sure you take care of your supply supply was actually what sort of screwed me over at the end didn't have nine mil which was kind of sad and brawler made it so i couldn't push stocks no brawler the double pop here wasn't actually needed i would have been able to Play the game without that, it would be fine. But yeah, and yeah, I'm just checking um, all the bags to try and find nine more. You don't want to waste a game like this, especially in, in this situation where I never had anything bigger than 46, uh, by just not looting stuff. You always want to make sure you take three seconds of your time to just loot something. Especially when you're playing solo squad, because if you get quad child with no loot, there's nothing you can really do, not gonna lie. So I'm picking up armor. This was actually all I was looking for. I was looking for 9 mil at least so I can have some sort of clip and armor repair. Because if I lose my armor, that's going to be a humongous problem. And if I don't have a VMP, that's also going Question to be a humongous problem. So as you can see, with a kill feed, people are dying out way faster than if there was less people. That's just how it is. There's more density. Uh, and there's not much you can really do about that. It's something you have to deal with. You don't want to make sure... You want to, you want to make sure you're in a clear mindset where you understand that this is what's going to happen. If I was playing this and I was sort of letting uh, 
impulses get to me, which was in this case, I was kind of calm. I just didn't really care. It was, <laughs> sounds like I'm high in the video as well. Then I'm fine. I can understand that this is going to happen. I'm going to lose a lot of kills. That's fine. Uh, and you'll understand that the value of time isn't as high as you might think. You can actually play it slightly more slow than you, than you would expect. I got really bad uh, position with this because a lot of people ended up in docks, which was really cringe. Uh, again, supply didn't allow me to push down here, which was kind of sad. And also, for some reason, those guys were down. This is an interesting thing. Sometimes your velocity of a gun will be garbage. Again, I'm playing it really safe. I'm actually running away and waiting for this guy to push me. And I'm holding a garbage head glitch here for him. Uh, usually, I don't do this. Usually, I just wouldn't care. I would just chow. But I'm playing a lot, um, a lot more intelligently. Especially for this sort of game. If this was me nowadays, I'll just try and max it out, push everything. This was a very, very nice part of the game. Where well, there's actually a guy camping here who could have killed me. I'm checking up here to make sure there's no one that's going to chow me from there. Uh, what I should have also checked was maybe here and somewhere down here, but I can watch this. No! Oh, I was actually uh, sort of whispering in this game because so it was I sort of him. nighttime. I'm not saying this to, to make him feel bad. I'm, I'm really thankful, bro. Sorry for killing you, but I would have been so sad. Now, in my opinion, the SWAT is one of the better ARs you can pick up at the floor. That's why I'm using it. I never did actually find like a peacekeeper or anything, which was a bit of an RIP. It would have been better off, and especially like an Eco Hawk would have made it a bit nicer. I get, I can get 50, bro. How? The lobby, uh, the lobby overall was sort of. Uh, I found a lot of trash cans, but the problem with trash cans is what happens right here in the game, where you just have like a three man which instantly die, yes. just like doing nothing. Go, 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 go. Again, I'm looking for these supply drops to try and get loot. Try and I was really hoping for a sparrow uh, and a war machine. Sadly, you can't always rely on good luck, because if I got a sparrow and war machine, I could have actually pushed basement here and had a few more kills i got a trauma kit and mobility didn't pick up the mobility again try and free up as much of your backspace as possible you don't want to be stuck here looting a bag and then realizing you need to drop stuff I did nine more, very badly. i'm taking the outer edge so i don't have to push for this open side here because i uh, what i didn't want to happen at this point was just get chowed randomly by a guy from the top i'm just checking back here just in case there's people from this point, you can easily tell where people are. So, you know they're going to be here. You most likely know they're going to be here because I didn't check everything. And they're going to come up from here. So, these are the three positions you want to be aware of. And I am also in the middle of, this, of the map. So, I'm, like, I'm holding the mid zone. Holding mid zone, pretty good idea uh, for endgame because people come to you. And you can see as much information as possible because you have equal information from all sides. Allows you to max yeah. out the kills as, like, as much as I'll possible. Again, I'm trying to peek this to make sure I don't get chowed from back there. Just slow peeking everything. Using rocks to cover so I don't get baited from there. I hate when it uh, goes out. That's side. And this is the point where there was just like three guys camping and they all just kind of died. I did a very nice play here. Good map knowledge. Again, with the mindset, when you do not just really care that much about the game, and do not get annoyed with people killing you and just sort of playing because you're playing, you will remember a lot more information than you might think. And this is one of those situations where I remember this little thing right here. I knew this guy was looting because I heard the bag open. And you can actually slow jump this and go back to the side. And then this guy, this looting was very dangerous because there's actually a door here. People could have chowed me right here and ended my whole career. I had enough bullets to do something. So that's probably why I made the decision. And I am looting to make sure I take care of my supply. And it was good because I got 9 mil and I got grapples. Which is exactly what I needed. Again, by this zone, having 9 people, very, very good. Or 8 people. I'm following this guy in a very... I'm, I'm basically chasing him, which is sort of dangerous. But the way... I mean, he was running, and the, the way you can sort of identify how garbage people are is, I mean, this guy is just running out in the open, in <laughs> a straight line. 
in the middle of nowhere just looking at where your enemy is traveling to and when they where they came from and if they're looking around you can sort of decide if the guy's gonna wait for you and absolutely destroy you or if he's just gonna go somewhere not even realize you're behind him so this is why i actually made a more unsafe play here uh, because you could sort of tell this guy was kind of garbage and from this side you can probably know that he's in this corner i don't actually know how i played i think he actually i didn't actually chow him the reason i didn't chow him was at this point you do not want to chase this because if you chase this stuff and the, his teammate might be in there so you might run into a double chow the moment i heard him looting i was thinking okay well maybe this guy maybe this guy is leaving a bit more uh stuff open so that i can exploit and I'm looking at the bag, because this is where the bag was. I'm pulling my aim towards here. I'm thinking he's going to be on the stairs. He's actually in the corner. And I used to do this a lot, where I just swipe to people. I don't swipe as much anymore, but it worked back then, not going to lie. I'm using 14-14 sensitivity, uh, for, uh, sensitivity, of course, 4x, 4x. So it makes my swipes a lot easier to do. And I got another consumer from there, which is good. Sadly, I lost my kill here. And this was the last leisure space I had. After this, I get all the rest of the kills. This is the issue with swiping. Uh, you s uh, the way I swiped, I used to double swipe. Where I would swipe once. And then try and swipe again to make sure I'm on the target. So as you could, yeah, that's like a double swipe. I swiped here and back. Let me show you. Like here. You miss and you swipe back. Uh, that's always how I swiped. I never got anything first try. Uh, this makes it very uneasy to hit people, especially when they're moving. This is why I don't do this so much now. And in this situation, you can definitely see that. We're tracking him. I was slightly off, but he was pretty garbage. No armor, and he pushed me for no reason. Here, prioritizing high ground is very important. There is a space here, right? So I know there's no one behind me, it's obvious, because it's close. So the only people that are remaining is like five guys. They have to come from this bottom part. This space right here has a very big verticality difference. It means if I hold this angle here, they're going to get pushed out of zone into an open space where they cannot do anything to me, but I can absolutely destroy them. I also want to make sure I'm not in a 1v4 situation, because if I am, this is going to be very much more difficult. I have a very limited time to try and pull this game into my favor and what i actually did back then was i basically played it perfectly correctly so i'm going to use this as cover uh after, after i failed the jump and i'm going to be using this top part to try and do as much damage and pressure them in here what they should if you want to know what they should do in this situation uh they should actually be pushing together and jump shotting me uh if you jump shot and push together here you basically break whatever they have and then you push after they unpeak and then after they unpeak uh, you have your position and they have their position and you're safe right underneath them and then you can just play the waiting game the way they they did this was they did it completely wrong they like jumped slid out into more open ground and didn't try even to shit back Max, I don't know. as you can see here barely with armor the guy tried to tomahawk me which is Really dumb idea. If it hit me though, it'd be kind of cringe. But yeah, I was kind of lucky because these guys, they were okay, but they didn't have the brain. After this point, you know there's not going to be people coming from here. So I'm turning my attention to below me because I just wiped the team here. So there's no one else that's going to come from there. The zone is also getting really slow. I'm, I was actually thinking they're going to come from the bottom because I thought I would have heard this guy. I see this guy, so it's nice. I kill him. At this point, I have to make the jump down. This is probably the only time in the game where I'm going to be exposed. And I do have a lot of cover here, which I can use, which is very beneficial of me. So I'm going to jump to the cover. And then I'm going to wait in the zone just to check if the guy's there. So if you notice, he's downed. So they're on the same team. If you down someone, try to expect the next person to be either next to them or sort of in the same area as them. Turns out he was actually in this room and jumped out. He sort of revealed himself. He's actually looking at my old position. This is the importance of moving around at least slightly. Uh, when you have the chance, when you when you can't see the enemy and you just shot somewhere and you move, this is very much more likely to happen where they're actually going to aim at you in a different place. It basically puts you at no disadvantage because if I didn't move, uh, I mean, if the zone was still there, for example, 
then yeah, I would have a decent position, but he would know where I am, I wouldn't know where he is. And at this point, it's basically a winning situation because the guy, he doesn't see me. I did it, bro. I did it. All objectives complete. Stand down. As you can see by my voice, it was actually a lot more, um, I don't know. I think it was a lot more tired at the time <laughs> than I, I am now. GG's, guys. GG's. And then 50% accuracy and 6,700 damage, which is actually kind of on point. Um, this wasn't really too over damaged like my 47. It was pretty nice. And 50 uh, accuracy is actually pretty good as well. Thank you, bro. I love you. You can actually hear my voice cracking in this. Um, it's I wasn't actually really crying in the gameplay uh funny enough but i was it did touch me a bit that i got this gameplay done because it was impeccable timing the day that this gameplay got done and that's exactly why uh, i believe a lot of what happened in this day which is i think the main point i would try and make with the analysis of this gameplay uh, the things that happen within your life within a sort of day uh, if you have a shit day you're gonna play shit in the game because you have a negative outlook, it's sort of, it's it sort of drives you to self-destruction. In this day, though, and I remember very vividly, it was a very, very, very nice day for me. <laughs> and the reason I was so touched by it was because uh, it was the irony that I grinded for five months, right? For this sort of gameplay, I actually thought I got a world record out of 44, then someone showed me that Finesse had one out of 45. So I was grinding the game, sort of like, I don't know, like six hours a day. I didn't really have anything else to do, and it was kind of sad. Uh, and the one day where I did something else, I got my 46. And that's what I, uh, that was why I was so, um, I was so touched. And you can Bro, hear by my voice game, that I, um, I, love you. I guess you could say I am. I don't know. I'm just chilling, you know. And I had a very oh, positive right. reaction. Now I could have cut this reaction out, but I think it's good to show it uh, because it, it it it's a it's a unique reaction and it's uh, authentic, which is nice. This was the first time, you know. First time in so many days when I went out and did something else after school instead of playing this game. This was the first time I did something other than this game. <laughs> I was so happy when I did that thing for somebody. It was like three hours. I came back from that, you know, it was the first time I was like so happy, man. I said, imagine I could be my record now. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> imagine. But it's just... It's crazy. It brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of the line. I did it, man. I made it. And as per tradition, I guess. <laughs> Uh, praise you, suck my dick. But damn. What the hell? That was so crazy. <laughs> the first, it was the first time in like a few months where I did anything else than play this game. The irony, <laughs> the absolute irony, that's crazy, GG. And that was all. I guess since it's the one year anniversary, uh, time to explain what the uh, what actually occurred within the day. Uh, at school, there was this very, very, very amazing teacher I had, and that day, there was a nice event after school where usually I would come back home, grind this game. Teacher's like, Jacob, come over, help me out with this, right? 
Uh, I actually didn't come to school that day to grind this game, but I came specifically for that event after. And it was an interesting time because it made me feel a bit more alive than I usually felt. Um, because at this time, I was sort of just, I was literally grinding. I actually finished 9 for 1, came back a month later and just sort of went into the same pattern of just grinding pointlessly. That day, I felt like everything was different and it actually inspired me to play the game less after I got this uh, gameplay here. And it was very nice. And so everything felt so much more peaceful and less stressed than just playing this game. And the way I felt, and I, I said this in the gameplay when I said like, you know, imagine I did beat my record. And I, I did actually say that before this gameplay happened. And this is one of the reasons I remember it so well is because uh, the way I felt in the game in the, before the day, uh, the positive mindset I had, I did truly believe that it felt like I would have bro broken a record that day. And so I played for two hours, got this gameplay, and everything felt like it fell into place. And this is something that might happen with you and whenever you're trying to grind for something. Sometimes just letting go a bit and seeing what happens, usually it might drive you forward to actually uh, getting a record. The other records, the 47 and 48, actually happened way more randomly than this one. The only gameplays I ever did that had any meaningful event before them was this gameplay and the 43. Uh, and this is one of the reasons I value this gameplay above all else, because this gameplay, in my opinion, is the only gameplay that ever mattered. I would have scrapped any 40 just for this game. I would scrapped all my 40s just to have this game. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to suggest to you is whenever you're playing the game, make sure to try and meditate and control your emotions. There's a lot of people who will start crying because they're 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 dying and shit. This is me as well. You can see by my gameplays, I am uh, quite annoyed sometimes. But try and play it. Try and play it free. When you die, don't say, you know, this game is shit. Try and analyze the situation. What mistake did you make? Once, once, you, once you find the mistake, done. Forget about it. Move on to the next game. And that's how I was playing that day. And everything felt so much at, more at peace. There was no stress. Uh, there was just chill. And that's basically that, get, that gameplay right there. Now... The importance of this gameplay as well, which I didn't mention, was that amazing teacher which I had at my school. She actually taught me English. Uh, she absolutely disappeared at a certain point. Vanished into thin air. She was my favorite teacher ever. Uh, disappeared. And this is one of the gameplays that reminded me of her the most. And this is why I value this gameplay so much. That's why it means so much to me. But other than that, I think that's basically it for the analysis. I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you want me to make any more analysis vids like this, of course, tell me because I would love to make more for you. And if you have any other suggestions of any other gameplays you want me to analyze, tell me, of course. I might analyze it with someone else. I have a way to do that now. Maybe Genocide will hop along and anal analyze it with me. Uh, but yeah, all you should take away from this video is make sure your mindset is correct. Make sure you're always chilling. Don't take the game as seriously. If someone shoots your body. <laughs> Don't, don't, even, don't even bother, bro. They're not going to chow you. They're going to run. If you, if you chow them, they're going to dodge. But yeah. GG's. I hope to see you another time. If you want to watch this gameplay yourself, I'll link it down below. The one year anniversary of it has happened today. It's a nice commemoration to this beautiful gameplay. Have a wonderful, wonderful time. I shall see you in the next one. Bye.